uh, Sutta study retreat, I was uh, teaching the four foundations of mindfulness. Uh, it was five day retreat, but I could not finish it. I did only mindfulness of the body. Uh, so it was uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, teaching, many discourses, and law, many more uh, details. And therefore somebody asked me to continue it uh, today. I don't think even today I can finish the entire section on, uh, on that I'm planning to talk about. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about uh, feeling, uh, meditation on feeling. It is said when uh, one feels uh, pleasant feeling, one should know that it is a pleasant feeling. One feels unpleasant feeling, one should know that one feels unpleasant feeling. When one feels painful feeling, one should know that one feels painful feeling. When one feels equanimous feeling, one should know that one feels equanimous feeling. Now, I want to explain this, this section. And also if one feels a carnal a pleasant feeling, one should know one feels carnal pleasant, pleasant feeling. When one feels a pleasant feeling dependent on renunciation, then one knows that one feels feeling on renunciation, pleasant feeling, and uh, unpleasant feeling when one feels a uh, carnal unpleasant feeling, one should know that one feels carnal unpleasant feeling. When one feels uh, uh, unpleasant feeling based on financiation, one should know that one feels the unpleasant feeling based on renunciation. When one feels uh, equanimous feeling, carnal equanimous feeling, one should know that one feels carnal equanimous feeling. And when one feels uh, equanimous feeling based on renunciation, one should know that one feels equanimous feeling based on renunciation. These are the uh, nine kinds of feelings uh, explained in the feeling section. Now, let us take each of them little, uh, uh, each of them and focus our mind to understand them more clearly. Of course, if you feel any, feel any feeling, you know that it is that you feel that particular feeling. So you might wonder, what is the big deal? How can we use this feeling as an object of meditation? Well, we have to go into a little more detail uh, and to understand it. Uh, more clearly. Uh, that is, uh, there are uh, six kinds of joy based on household life. And this kind of joy based on renunciation. 
And there are six kinds of grief based on household life and six kinds of grief based on financiation. And there are six kinds of equanimity based on household life and six kinds of equanimity based on renunciation. That means uh, six, uh, these are called 36 uh, kinds of feelings, 36. Now, nine feelings becomes 36 feelings. Now, let us take this, each of them, a little more detail separately and try to understand them in detail. Now, what is the sixth kind of joy based on household life? That is, we have six senses. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. These are six senses. Now let us take one for instance. When one regards... Uh, and then with six senses, we have form, feeling, uh, form, sound, smell, taste, touch, and mind object. So these are the objects of these six senses. Suppose one uh, uh, regards as again the gain of forms cognized by the eye. Forms cognized by the eye. That are uh, forms, more than one form, forms cognized by the eye that are wished for, desired, agreeable, gratifying, and associated with worldliness. Worldliness, associated with worldliness. That means forms, many kinds of forms. They are so good that we wish them to, to see them again and again and again and again. That is the wish for forms or desired. And they are agreeable to us and they gratify us, and they all are related, associated with the world outside ourselves. Or when one remembers, one remembers certain forms that one had already seen, through our eyes, and yet they are no longer with us. They are uh, again with the same qualities they were wished for, desired, agreeable, gratifying, and associated with the worldliness, but they all have passed away, disappeared, because they all are impermanent, and ceased. You cannot see them anymore, and changed. However, the memory of those pleasant objects lingers in our mind. Either we see pleasant objects now, or we remember the pleasant objects that we have seen before and they are no longer with us. 
either the memory of those present objects or the memory of the present objects are in present. In these two situations, some objects we have seen, but they are no longer there. And yet, the pleasant sensation, the pleasant feeling is there. You may think, oh, I went to such and such a place. The place was so gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful. I have seen such and such an animal. This animal was a very beautiful person. I wish I had one for them to domesticate and keep in my house and so forth. Or I have seen some person, uh, such a wonderful person, pleasing, agreeable, Everything is good in that person. That person appearance, talk, and so forth. I like to have that person. Or those objects we see now. Now in both cases, there arises a pleasure, joy. That kind of joy is called household joy. Household joy. And then similarly, sound, a smell, taste, touch, and thought. We have seen, we have heard so many beautiful sounds, music, talks, concerts, and so forth and so on. When you remember them, you even cannot sleep because your mind is uh, you have already stored in your mind, and you recall them and enjoy that pleasure that you have heard. And or something you are hearing now, they are all agreeable, pleasing, and so forth. And then you like to keep on hearing and listening and listening and listening and listening to that sound. Similarly, you have smelled certain things in the past. The smell of food, flowers, incense, and uh, so forth and so on. Uh, there are thousands of different flowers. You smell them, uh, then some perfumes, incense, and so forth and so on. You have smelled in the past. Or you are smelling them now. They are very pleasing to you, they cannot close your nose. The smell of food, the smell of flowers, the perfume and so forth. And similarly, taste. You have tasted so many things in the past. Some of them, when you think of them, even now, it waters your mouth. <laughs> you want to have that taste again and again, juicy ice cream. Juicy cake, uh, hogan dosh ice cream, this and that, all kind of ice cream. And or uh, you are tasting them now. You keep you tasting, 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 tasting. And then you touch something in the past and forgot, gone, disappeared. And yet you remember the contact of that uh, place, animal, persons, situations, and so forth. Or you are touching them now, enjoying them pleasure, enjoying the pleasure of them. Or the memories of certain mind objects. Or you are seeing mentally, you visualize it now. All these are related to worldly things. And therefore, they are called worldly joy, worldly pleasure, coming through six senses. Therefore, they are called six <coughs> uh, joy uh, that arises through six senses. And there are six kinds of joy based on renunciation. Now, First joy you have by possessing them, holding them, 
tangible and so forth, then there is another kind of joy by letting go, letting go. That is a very special kind of joy. Therefore, it is called joy of renunciation. What is that? That's also very important to remember. <clears throat> so, you know whatever you experience now, whatever, the pleasant, beautiful, and so forth, so you experience now, they all are impermanent. They all are impermanent. You know, when you focus your mind on impermanence, it entails dukkha, suffering. Then there is no pleasure. But one who sees things with wisdom, impermanence gives them a pleasure, happiness, joy. You see, See the difference between wise reflection, seeing certain things with proper wisdom. When you see the true nature, true nature of everything is that everything is impermanent. There is no exception. Now, you see any object any object. You have seen objects in the past and you recall all of them were impermanent. All of them are impermanent. And you are seeing some objects now, they all are impermanent. You experience only impermanence. Your breath is impermanent, your perception is impermanent, your Feeling is impermanence, your thoughts are impermanence. You see impermanence exactly as it is with proper wisdom. Proper wisdom. When you see impermanence with proper wisdom, you have joy. You know, when you do not have proper wisdom, impermanence makes you unhappy make you suffer. When you cease impermanence with proper wisdom, proper wisdom means seeing them as they really are. Because things are not permanent. They are always changing. And then, you see, all the forms that, uh, the, that you have seen in the past, were impermanent, all the forms that you are seeing now are all impermanent. This impermanent enters joy rather than suffering. You, when you do not have proper wisdom, impermanence entails suffering. Yadani chantandukkam, whatever is impermanent is unsatisfactory for an ordinary person. But for person with wisdom, all impermanent things are impermanent things produce joy. Why? Impermanence is the truth. Seeing the truth, you have joy. And that is why Buddha said, among all the tastes in the world, the tastiest of all the taste is the taste of truth. Uh, taste of truth is the tastiest of all the taste. So that statement applies here. So similarly, when you heard things in the past and you are hearing now something, all you see there, all you experience with wisdom 
is that everything that you have seen was impermanent. Everything you see now, impermanent. Everything you heard in the past was impermanent. Everything you are hearing now is impermanent. Everything you have uh, smelt in the past was impermanent. Everything you are smelling now is impermanent. Everything you tasted in the past was impermanent. Everything you are tasting now is impermanent. Everything you touched in the past was impermanent. Everything you are touching now is impermanent. Every thought you had in the past was impermanent. Every thought you have now is impermanent. That means you have six kinds of mental uh, the, the, the feelings, six kinds of feelings, which are called the feel, feeling based on renunciation, letting go. When things are impermanent, to you let them be impermanent. You don't try to make them permanent. If you wish them to be permanent, then you build up resistance, resistance in your mind. You know, psychologically, when you build up resistance, you have friction. Friction means suffering. So you don't build up your build up friction. You don't, you don't have to resist the reality. You see the reality and go along with reality. That is called letting go of real, what is impermanent is called joy based on renunciation. Joy based on renunciation. Then, uh, then you have some uh, six kind of uh, grief based, uh, what you call, carnal grief based on carnal or household life or based on uh, carnal experience. What are they? <clears throat> when one regards as a non-gain and non-gain of forms cognizable by the eye that are wished for, desired, agreeable, gratifying, associating with worldliness. Or when one recalls what was formerly not obtained, that has passed, ceased, and changed, grief arises. Now, now in this life, in the present moment, you want to gain something pleasing, gratifying, agreeable, associated with worldly things. You want to gain it. You want to gain. But you cannot gain it. That means not to get what one wants in short, when the Buddha said. Here he explained in more detail. You want to get something that means you want to get a certain form uh, which you like, which is agreeable, gratifying, but you cannot get it. Or in the past, you tried very hard to gain some, something to please your eyes, but unfortunately you could not get it. Uh, you see, so many you hear so and so climb uh, Mount Everest. You wish to climb it. Oh, I wish, I wish I had. But you, you could not. Your various limitations stop you climbing Mount Everest. You wish somebody has uh, traveled to various other places in the world. 
you could not travel physically and somebody got so many material things to please their eyes you could not get them even now you cannot get them you get only certain limited amount and therefore you are unhappy for not getting something that you want now you are unhappy that you could not get in the past so either way you are unhappy you no, could not get them in the past you are unhappy you cannot get something that you want to get now you are unhappy that can be some kind of form sound smell taste touch and ideas these are six kind of household or a pain or grief related to household life or carnal pain carnal pain mundane ordinary pain now how about the uh rena pain of pain of uh, financial that is kind of grief based on renunciation we said earlier renunciation gains pleasure letting go of pleasure now we talk about uh, the grief or suffering you gain from renunciation these two superficially seem contradictory but this is how it happens so you see everything is impermanent as i mentioned of the past present future and so forth everything is changing everything is passing away uh, everything is form uh, the passing away and you see this proper wisdom you see this proper wisdom as just as before that forms therefore both of the past and the now are all impermanent suffering and subject to change one generates longing for the supreme liberation thus ah uh, when i shall enter upon and abide in that base that the noble ones now enter enter upon and abide in okay now a noble one seeing impermanence unsatisfaction and selflessness have attained liberation they have attained stream entry in order to attain stream entry they practice what i am practicing i see with proper wisdom impermanence unsatisfaction and selflessness but i still in the same place i am not at in that state then there arises in you how can i attain that how can i attain that i am working very hard i do i follow all the instructions i follow all the rules in the book i am very obedient my morality is good my concentration is good i have i see impermanence and satisfactoriness and so forth with proper wisdom and yet i have not attained it but so and so has attained it and then there arises grief in him there is a grief in you because you could not get what you wanted now not to get what you want has two aspects ordinary householders 
suffering from not getting what that person wants. Also, the one who is trying renunciation, practicing everything related to renunciation, that person practicing renunciation, practicing a correct way, and still he could not attain statement, uh, the state of enlightenment. That is what he suffers from. He doesn't get what he wants. <laughs> he doesn't get what he wants. And therefore he also is suffering as grief. That is called grief based on renunciation or grief based on the uh, on the noble ones in his mind. Grief, is, that is called grief based on renunciation. Intention is to renounce. Intention is to attain liberation. But he works hard and hard he makes effort, mindful, concentration. Everything he does correctly. But he has not attained that state. Therefore, the person gets discouraged and gets upset. And so, similarly, this happened through the eyes, ears, nose, trunk, body, and mind. Form, sound, smell, taste, touch, and thought. That means he sees impermanence in the form, sees impermanence in sound, sees impermanence in smell, taste, touch, and thought. He sees this. He saw them in the past, he them happening now, and yet he has not attained statement. So, this kind of, this is called sixth kind of pain based on renunciation. Okay, now there's one more section I want to finish it very quickly. That is six kind of equanimity based on the household life. Six kind of uh, equanimity based on the household life. One sees form with eyes. Again, equanimity arises in the foolish, infatuated, ordinary person. In an un, uh, untaught ordinary person who has not uh, conquered his limitations or conquered the results of action, who is blind to danger. And he has that kind of equanimity as this uh, does not transcend the form. That is why it is called equanimity. That means one tries to gain all kind of things through his uh, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. And he tried everything, but he is always short of something. Always short of something. And then it, he come to a, a sort of a self-deception and thinks, yeah, who cares what I don't need anymore. Just like the a sour grape. You try and you don't get it and then you give up. And that is because of the persons, ordered person has not conquered the limitation. That means he does not understand the limit even though he tried to uh, go beyond his limit. He cannot go, do that. He doesn't understand the limit of his body, feeling, perception, and so forth. And because he's, he, has, he doesn't have proper wisdom. And yet, and therefore, that kind of equanimity is called equanimity based on household life. Okay? Uh, that is with regard to the form sound, 
smell, taste, touch, and thought. All this is limited. All these are limited. He doesn't understand limit and try to go beyond the limit. And finally, he burn out. And then, then he will have uh, equanimity. Now, what is the equanimity based on renunciation? That's called six hundred equanimity based on renunciation. That is, again, the person uh, sees everything impermanent, everything unsatisfactory, everything selfless, everything changing, fading away, ceasing, every form impermanent, ceasing, unsatisfactory. You see, that person's theme is always impermanent, unsatisfactory, and selflessness. One time when he sees them, he had a joy. Another time he sees them, he has a grief. This time he, has, he sees them, he has equanimity. How is that? Why worry? Everything, every form I saw in the past, every form now is impermanent. Every sound in the past, every sound now is impermanent. And so forth, smell, taste, touch, and thought of the past, present, all are impermanent. Then, he has proper wisdom and sees them all are equal, all equal. There is no excitement. He, he maintain his balance. And that you can see, very, I have mentioned it several times. Let me finish it very quickly. You know this uh, Mangala Sutta? Last but one stanza. Puttasa loka dhammehi chittang yasana kampati asokam virajam khemam etam mangala murtamam. That is seeing, experiencing worldly condition. Labha, alabha, ayasa, ayasa, saninda, pasanta, sukha, dukha. Gaining, losing, uh, uh, fame, fame and not fame, uh, and prem, uh, you know, blame and praise, happiness and un unhappiness. In in all these situations, this person remains equanimous. Why? All are impermanent. Gain is impermanent. Loss is impermanent. Praise is impermanent. Pleasure is impermanent. Happiness is impermanent, unhappiness is impermanent. You know, all these are impermanent. And therefore the person remains equanimous. And these are the 36 kind of feelings. Pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. That is all I can do today, friends. I went a little overboard uh, because I said this is a very important subject, and now I want to uh, end this session and let us do some meditation. And we have very short time for meditation. Okay? All right. Okay. We have about 20 minutes, and then we have, okay. May all beings be happy and secure. 
may all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long or large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will, should anyone wish harm to another, as a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision. Removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. So, friends, let us meditate the remaining 20 minutes. Okay.
Mesh of the meritorious deeds. May I never join with the foolish. May I join always with the wise until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, so, so. Okay, friends, I want to end this session. And I want to wish all those who are in hospitals, suffering from various diseases, taken care of by doctors, nurses, and hospital staff, may they recover very soon and return to their normal life and practice Dhamma, practice meditation, and liberate from samsaric suffering. May all the doctors and nurses and hospital staff who are taking care of these people, seeking their own life and sacrificing their comfort, may they also find time to practice meditation and liberate themselves from samsaki suffering. May all those who have lost their loved ones and grieving, may they be free from grief and find time to understand the nature of Dhamma as everything is impermanent, unsatisfactory and selfless, and understanding this with uh, real wisdom, may they also find time to liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all those who are in the northern direction, northeastern direction, Eastern direction, southern direction, southwestern direction, western direction, northwestern direction, up and down below. May all these in these ten directions, all those who are well, happy, and peaceful, and attain liberation from samsaric suffering. May all of you attain. Nibbana and time, peace, happiness, and comfort. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you for the teachings, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Pinsit Deveva.